Nerfcast! It's Lurpcast TV. Wait, hold on. Not ready. Um, look at this medal. I'm going to wear this medal right now. I won a championship with Extreme. Third place, better than first. Uh, this episode of Lurpcast TV, you've seen us cover a bunch of different games. You've seen us um, kind of talk about where we came from. Best practices for attending cons. This was another in that series of videos. We're talking about your favorite Lurpcast characters. You know, Biron, Valdrick, Extreme, Johnny P. You know us by now. We're eight episodes, nine episodes in, right? So you know us by now. We're household names. I get it. We're going to give you something additional to ponder around the dinner table with the family. And if you were casting us in different roles, say in the A-Team, say in a Marvel movie, who would we be? So we're going to kind of run through this. Um, I'd like to say that we don't really assign ourselves, but we could throw out ideas, but most of them will be shot down because as usual, you will assign yourself somebody cool and we always pick somebody shitty for you. That's how these types of things always go. Am I right? Um, I will say this, before we get rolling in this, uh, we're gonna go through all these different universes uh, of sorts and talk about the characters, who we would be in there. When we get to the end, um, we're gonna be leaving one off because we're putting that one in the Zlurp Nation. But this is different, because I'm going to give you time to sign up. So if you're watching this video at this moment, like the day it came out, even the day after it came out, you still got time to sign up to the Zlurp Nation. Free email list. I won't spam you. It's all stuff for the show. In the description below, sign up link right on there. In a couple of days, you will get the final casting that we will not cover in this one. Uh, this is actually heavier than I thought. Deathicon went all out. It's pretty heavy. Um, so I'm going to take it off. Death, oh, Death Chicken. Who here remembers what that is? <laughs> uh, so this is pre beer on and by the way it's also two i don't have many two x's anymore this is huge i mean now i was way fatter back i didn't realize that uh death chicken was a band that we didn't actually play any gigs we didn't really let on any tracks but we were a pretty notorious band back in the uh the 2015s right roughly yeah. maybe yeah, before, probably before, right? before that yeah um extreme you were were you singer uh yes Okay, look at that. So Extreme was on vocals. I think I was on uh, guitar. I think we had Abraxas on bass, Randall on drums, and I think that was the band. Yeah. Right? There might have been a rogue Canadian that slipped in on keys one episode. <laughs> <laughs> I said that just to get a little sneer from beer on. All right, so um, I took a few notes, as I'm sure everybody did. Um, may I kick it off with the first one? Sure. Masters of the Universe. As some people call it, oh, you watch He-Man? Like, well, He-Man's a character. It's Master of the Universe, but sometimes they're one and the same. It's a very vast universe. They're the masters of the universe. So even within the masters of the universe, they're quite vast. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, Valdrick first. Um, I'm giving you Fisto. And Fisto is a character with a giant fist. Can you hold up your mug real quick? <laughs> Because this it's exactly what this looks like right now. Like you would beat people to a pulp with the big gulp mug. That's what Fisto would do. Uh, extreme, Biron, who did you have for Mike? I had I had Mike as Moss Man. Mm. Because he's <laughs> he's hair suit. A so little Moss bit. Of and, and smells of pine. Mm. Moss Man was the only, I mean, I don't want to say it of all time, but at the time, and probably for a long time after, the only action figure to uh, be covered in turf of sorts. Um, like it's pretty crazy. Like it's a fuzzy action figure. So Moss Like Man's you could a use a Moss Man if you had one handy as basing material for a minute. <laughs> you could. I don't know what, like over the years, like if someone still has a Moss Man, it wasn't, I mean, cause we, you know, we opened them up. I don't know how that, like fared over the years. I bet you I bet you I can find out because they're next to Grogdar Games in Roselle, Illinois. There's this place called Wax Packs. Okay, shout out. Next one they gotta pay for, by the way. But yeah, they do. Fun. Um it, the place is a nightmare. It's it's pure oh, yeah. nightmare fuel in there, but I bet you he has a moss man and I bet you it has the hantavirus on it. Now will you know if it <laughs> um has actual moss on it or it could be growth of some kind. I don't know. Okay. Um extreme, who do you have for casting of Valdrick? 
I had him as man at arms. Ooh, man at arms will come up later in this discussion, by the way. So, uh, I thought okay. of him as our okay. wise leader that's always trying to give us good advice and we don't a veteran? listen. Yeah, the veteran. Mike, have you ever worn like a, a I mean, I, not a full suit of armor, but just enough to cover like, like don't damage my mouth. You can kill the rest <laughs> of the people. Like, just uh, stop here. Because that was what he was known for. And he was Tila's dad. Yeah, wh and what happened to Tila's mom? We don't Did she die in childbirth? Yeah, we don't speak of her. Oh. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it might have been the sorceress. We don't know. They don't. They didn't get into it. So, um, those are all good choices. Is Man at Arms the only confirmed heterosexual character in He Man? <laughs> That's really funny you say that because we're going to get into that <laughs> in like a couple minutes. How <laughs> you're already wrong. Uh, so I think that that covers Mike. Um, so let's go to uh, Valdrick. You kick it off. Who do you have for Biron? I'll be honest with you. I misunderstood the, the instructions here. That's okay. right. So I did. I was not casting you. I was casting me. Oh, that, that, that's totally fine. Let's roll so, with and, it. And I'm so unfamiliar with the He-Man universe that <laughs> I know Skeletor, He-Man, Man-at-Arms. That's right. That's and right. You know Orko? he -Ra. That's What about it. Orko, the little guy? I can never find him. <laughs> He's hard to see, especially at night. Uh, that's fine, Mike. We, as we go on, if you feel like ad-libbing with the other categories, okay. I'm fine with you casting you too. Um, yeah, I was casting me as men at arms. Wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna just, I'll switch, switch gears then. I'm going to go to Biron. I put him as man at arms, and I'll tell you why. Um, so as indicated by the Death Chicken reference, um, you know, you are the newest to this group here of us. So I don't know what you acted like in the old days. Mm -hmm. Man at Arms looks like he was really gay in the old days, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you I know, was, Man, yes. Man at Arms also has a nice uh, a way of uh, a, array of weaponry. I know you have a lot of weapons as well. And I think that you, an old Zlurp cast, Extreme once said, I don't know why I remember this quote. He said, and I quote, Man at Arms could have been cool. And I don't really know what you meant by that. Um, if you want to expand it out, but like, Biron could be cool. Um, so do you want to go into what, what you meant by that, like years ago when you said that? I mean, he had potential to be cool. I think it speaks for itself. I don't want he to didn't quite make it. If things had gone a little differently for him, he would have been one of the cool guys. I mean, he's not like overly homoerotic more than everybody else in that universe. It's weird. He he strikes me as the older guy hanging out with the younger kids. Yeah, like like hello, like Steve Buscemi. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> yeah, hello, fellow kids. Yeah, they <laughs> met him. He like they asked him to buy beer, right. and then he's just stuck around for twenty years. It's kind of how it's all worked out. By the way, I bet Man at Arms. Like if they were to look up his age, it's probably younger than all of us right now. Even yeah. though he's like, the old guy on <laughs> the show, kind of like how Homer Simpson's thirty-five. Like what the fuck, you know. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go to uh, I'm gonna let's go to Brian Extreme now. Um, oh, we didn't go to everybody's beer on. Sorry, um, Extreme. Who did you have for for beer on? I had him as Beast Man. Ooh, why is that? Uh, it just amused me to think of beer on as Beast Man. Because <laughs> <laughs> my chair on my back is Beast Man. Did, did Beast Man talk or did he just grunt? He no, he talked. He snarled, and he was always berated by Skeletor. Right, he yeah. was he no was power. always specifically singled out by Skeletor, yeah. like to the oh. point where Beastman would have a legitimate beef with HR. Yeah, Beastman's <laughs> been written up a lot though. Yeah, um, some warranted, but a lot of them just to pad the file. So when mm -hmm. they want to get rid of them, like, listen, we got the papers. You know, it's it's fine. It's like when they say we promote you, but you don't have a degree in X. Right. Even though you didn't need that, that's the excuse we're going to use. Yeah. I know you're Beast Man, but you didn't graduate with a degree in Beastology. It's like, but I'm Beast Man. Like, mm, not going to cut it. Send him to HR. Um, so let's move over to uh, Extreme. And this was one that one was one of my favorites to put on there. It's going to be a weird one. But the reason why, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, do you guys know who Zodak is? So, is he one of the newer ones? No, he was like super old. Okay. So Zodak was one of the first figures I got back in the day. If you want to look it up here on and get a mental image. Um, I remember because he was one of the few figures with a hairy chest. And I know, you know, Brian is a very hairy man. Uh, even though I'm, I'm Greek, he's actually probably hairier. Um, and I think that what I really liked about Zodak was 
So my first group of figures I got was, uh, I didn't get the first run of He-Man. It was like round two. So my first He-Man was the kind where his chest spun because you would punch it and it would like, instead of making a dent, Battle damage He-Man. Right. So I got He-Man and Skeletor battle damage and Zodak in the same like Christmas or birthday, whatever it was. Then I watch a cartoon and I'm like, I don't really know this other guy. I find out Zodak is like, his whole thing is I'm neither good nor evil. And he, he kind of has uh, assisted both sides. He's flip-flopped a bit. And so I think about extreme, like with like Blood Bowl, sometimes he's angry about it, sometimes he loves it. Sometimes, you know, there's games like, like he's like, no, I'm not gonna get into this game. And then, hey, I just spent 500 bucks on it. So um, for me, that was very, he's a very extreme like character where you don't really know where he stands at any given time. You might just get the other one. So um, not, I wouldn't say bipolar. I just saying you get, you don't know which stance he's gonna take on any given issue. It's Andy, weird because his chest does indeed look hairy, but it's the same color as his flesh. Yeah, he is it's more I mean, of a texture than a hair. Like yeah, he's making like, more like a burn. I like think he got his was, chest burned. If I remember correctly, there was only a handful of like bodies for those figures. Yeah. And so most of them were He Man's body. Then the, or I I think there was like a, a little bit not quite as like ripped as He Man. Yeah. Body. There was one one step down muscular wise. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, the everybody body, which is mm -hmm. still huge. It, you know, it had a twelve pack instead of a sixteen pack. <laughs> um, but then there was the hairy body, which I've, only a handful had. So um, that's why I put Extreme as a Zodak. Just the, and he was an old figure I had, it was my first I ever had. So I uh, thought it was cool to, to bust out that memory. I saw the picture, I'm like, holy shit, I know that guy. That's Extreme. <laughs> Did his helmet give him super power? Because the helmet is the most striking part of that character. Um, yeah, I don't know what the deal with the helmet it was. I, it, I don't, it looks like it doesn't even come off. And in a way, I'll throw another one out there. It looks almost like a luchador mask, and that fits Extreme as well, too. So. Yeah. Because he's a There's more reasons why that's him. Um, what do you guys, uh, Biron, what did you have for Extreme? I had, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Okay. I had him as Tila. Mm. Okay. Because he's the most fuckable of the group. <laughs> and also, depending on who you ask, your daughter. <laughs> Miss, you know, over to you, Mr. Arms. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, most fuckable, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Because there were a handful of, of women, right? Tila. And we had to make I had to make sure to get that in there so Todd knows not to uh, spread the word about this video podcast. <laughs> not well, not work he'll safe. Spread the word, but he'll put a, like a disclaimer that's longer than the plug, and it's like, uh, like, did you eat? Did you like, you know, did you even it out or did you dig it deeper into a hole? <laughs> Great podcast, by the way. Um, send the children away. Uh, no dick so, jokes, please. Tila. Well, she brought sort of different universe, but um, Tila didn't. Wasn't there a, a female? Was there Evil Lynn? Evil Lynn. She was, yeah, on Skeletor's lover. Uh, maybe, probably, yeah. Um, she, and she really and, should have been the leader of the evil forces. She seemed way more competent than Skeletor. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> and and Sorceress was a woman as well. So we have three. Wait, a minute, you said Shira was a different universe. They uh, are. Well, this, uh, she's side, a spinoff. Spinoff. So, well, it's um, in a different planet where uh, Hordak is the bad guy. There are, there are crossovers, but they are essentially different universes. It is the Joni Loves Chachi of the He-Man universe. Okay. It is, right. it, is, it is Angel Show to Buffy Show. So tie that one to the off-the-air off discussion. Mm -hmm. um, very nice. So who's got a pick for me? I have you as Prince Adam. Oh. <laughs> Because um, you have secret superpowers that we don't all know about. Or because I thought it was he's, hilarious. He's gayer than man at arms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I appreciate the sentiment. Um, I just don't know if it's coming from a good place. <laughs> and I mean, I will say this. Here's, here's, I'll give you this one. I usually intro this show and Prince Adam intro the He-Man show. There you go. I'm Adam, Prince of Eternia. Defender of the Secrets of Castle Grayskull. Right. Fabulous powers. I don't normally... This is that. Cringer, <laughs> my fearless friend. And he's like... Yeah. Cringer. I cast myself as Cringer slash Battle Cat. Do you think... Because you have dual weird. personalities and you're bipolar? Yes. 
that's what I was going with. But now I look at Prince Adam and Cringer, and there's all kinds of weird things going on here. With, uh, well, in a way, I could be okay with that. So you're saying after I uh, hulk myself up, I help you get hulked up then? Sure, yeah. yeah. So you can't turn into Battle Cat without me, though? Is, or, or can you? Uh, I think... I don't know. I feel like there was some times that he did. Is this the sword that turns him into Battle Cat? The sword shoots Battle Cat into him. No, and he never true. wants it. He never consents. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> You're right. They needed some of the G.I. Joe PSAs in He-Man, a no-means-no episode. Hey, He-Man, <laughs> time's up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, Biron? Do you had you as Lockjaw. Oh, Lockjaw, okay. Because cool. you feel like the kind of guy who always has tricks up his sleeve like a gypsy. Mm -hmm. And he has those, you know, arm attachments. Yeah. And also, he's probably the most Greek-looking of them for some reason. Yeah, he's got kind of a, a, a Persian kind of hue to him. Yeah. He's a little green, I think, yeah. right? Um, I remember playing this game with people I work with. And I'm thankful none of us went this route, but... Um, I made a guy at work be many faces because I said, um, you know, he's a two-faced person that stabs people. In the face. <laughs> many faces. And it was a good way to get like some passive-aggressive stuff out there mm -hmm. uh, by way of He-Man universe. So cool. Anything else? With, anything else? Master of the Universe? We done here? Any? Or... What did I want to just say as myself? I always saw myself as Ram Man. Okay. Uh, because oh, he was the most disappointing of the action figures because he he <laughs> was the gonk droid of the He-Man toy line. Yeah, so I, I'm fine with throwing ourselves in there too. Um, Ram, Ram Man, though, Extreme, I believe, has already assigned him to somebody else. <laughs> is that true? Uh, yeah, well, it's an acquaintance of ours. You don't have to say who it is, but you can just say yeah, he's, um, he's, I mean, Biron, you're, you've got a better body than Ram Man. Just put it out there, you know. <laughs> I got a really big head though, like he does. So, yeah. so I think, um, yeah, I, I mean, I will say from an action figure standpoint, he was very um, like, hollow and plasticky. But he was like a like you you tilt like you could actually use it. Yeah, you shrink right? him down and he go boop. Yeah, so you can. What's so you know. crazy though? Is then later on, you had the wrestling figures, and you had uh, I think Marty Mag Marty Gen whew, Marty Janetti had the. It's supposed to be the top rope dive, but it was essentially the same action, only his neck got bigger instead of sinking into his knees. Was this later? Like, how long ago was this? No, that was, I mean, it was after He-Man, but. They, so they combined wrestling? I kind of don't, I don't think I remember that. Because I had the WWE, WWF at the time, action figures that were just big, huge, right. heavy chunks of rubber that yeah, the paint would the rub big, off on. The, the old, I think they were LJM, the big, giant yeah. rubber ones. And those, I think they covered those in the the toys they made us. Uh, yeah. great, great series on Netflix, by the way, for everyone to check out. But um, they kept wanting, bit, like, no, we're going to make bigger, bigger, bigger. Very, very Vince McMahon-esque of, you know, bigger is better. But they didn't do anything. I remember the Jesse the Body figure was this, though. And I actually would always put a guy who's going to slam, even though nobody would ever slam anybody. Like, like. Well, they were, po they were basically statues. They right. Didn't move. He was the only one I could actually do a move with. Yeah. Because he was doing this. Meanwhile, like, you can't actually lift somebody up, up like that. But, um, yeah, so Ram Man, I think, is uh, extreme. Did you cast yourself? Yeah, Cringer. Okay. Oh, that's right, Cringer. Uh, I think I'd be Skeletor, because that's who I, who I think it'd be. And that way, um, I could yell at people who don't do things right. I could say hogwash a lot. And when we get to G.I. <laughs> Joe, I don't want to, you know, full-on foreshadowing, but maybe I'm Cobra Commander, too, because I think it's the same guy, right? Same voice? Was, was I could see it. I mean, there was so much cross pollination. I think above. Starscream was in there too, as the same voice. But uh, um, all right, so we're good to move on. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, oh, next on my list. Look at this, GI Joe. Can't see it. Uh, GI Joe. Um, this is Extreme's favorite group of all these. One of, I'd say, right? One of them for sure. Yeah. A huge fan of the, the comic and the figures and all that. Um, I'm going to start with Valdrick. Uh, I put you as Buzzer who is one of the Dreadnoughts. And I'll tell you what. Um, one, he likes grape soda. Beard? I don't, I don't know his, uh, I don't know if he like what kind of soda he likes. I missed, I missed that episode. But uh, he does have a nice uh, blonde mane of a ponytail. The thing is, he's actually the smartest of all the, like he's smarter than he, he leads everyone to believe. Because he's not, 
I don't think he's the leader of the dreadnoughts. Zartan is, right? Right. Zartan the leader? Okay. He's, he's, yeah, it goes Zartan, then his sister's probably second in command. Right, Zarana? Zarana, Zarana yeah. Zarana, yeah. So he's, he's really smart, though. And I also learned while doing research, his real name is Dick Blinken. And I thought, <laughs> that sounds like a Mike kind of name, Dick Blinken. Oh. Why would they, I mean, when he was created, let's say he was created in 1985. Let's just throw that out there. In 1985, Dick meant penis, right? Yes. This isn't 1965 where Dick meant Richard. Dick was penis in 1985. Yet someone said, Dick Blinken. <laughs> we'll see if this gets bad with censors. <laughs> right. For, the, for these badass, like, this gang is now Dick Blinken. So, um, were they all Australian? or were Yeah, just- they were Australian, yeah. Um, so who, what do you guys have for, for Mike? I have his wild bill. Ooh, good choice. Uh, he, he flew the, uh, the, their equivalent of the Cobra helicopter, correct? It was like Not a Cobra, war- the terrorist organization, the U S army Cobra attack helicopter. But it was like a one seater, I think though, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Whereas the real one is two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, a- the mustache, like I could see Mike cultivating that mustache. And although Mike, does not have a southern accent he did go to school in florida and grew up in kentucky right no illinois no oh, no. oh i thought it close south enough. of i-80 no oh well no. oh for some reason you, you mentioned kentucky before yeah i dated some women from there oh that's what it was okay i knew it was somehow in your past much like man at arms past <laughs> um so extreme what'd you have for mike i had mike as dr mindbender <laughs> oh, another mustachio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, science. Okay, so this is going to be a recurring theme throughout this. I, I, I have a feeling that a lot of Mike picks for Mike will revolve around his um, alleged understanding of alleged. science. All right. <laughs> I am unfamiliar. I was in college when this came out. So when he was G.I. Joe. They were the giant <laughs> ones and they were dolls. Exactly. <laughs> And when they had the fuzzy hair on them. Yeah, you had, you had took, the G.I. Joe's that Dean had, the old school ones. Yeah, exactly. I took three online quizzes for what G.I. Joe character are you? <laughs> awesome. And all three of them gave me the same result. Okay. Scarlet. Whoa. <laughs> and let me read you what this says. Okay. Scarlet, you are a woman. Not literally, <laughs> but the most figurative sense possible. Honestly, we can't believe you mustered up the balls to take this quiz. In a world of masculinity, you fall terribly short to the point where your manhood is questioned daily. Most of your friends are still waiting for your balls to drop. Oh, <laughs> With nothing else to say. Stop reading this. Go away. Do some push-ups and come back when you've finished puberty. That's awesome. This quiz <laughs> this sounds like it was not like, like E-bomb. That was the hell of a quiz. <laughs> sounds like, like an E-bomb's world or fart quiz 20 years ago. <laughs> Maybe you're the man now, dog. Yeah, you're the man that were like Maddox. Remember that guy? Like, where it's just straight up insults and attacking your your manliness. Oh God. Oh man, that's rough. But all three of them. Okay, that's well. Now we know you're Scarlet. Um, will we everybody give their mic answer. So let's go to uh, let's go to Biron. Uh, for Biron, I went with mainframe. And like, so mainframe, his whole thing is like stopping viruses, but like, this is back in the mid eighties where we didn't even know what the hell computers could do. I mean, they had like a tape. The computer he came with was ju- the size of a, of a large suitcase. Like Hold on boss, let me get that floppy in here. Hold on, it's booting up. Yeah. Cover me. We'll get you next episode, it's booting up. Uh, so mainframe, I think much like Biron, like I don't, I don't, he says he works in IT type related roles now, but I have a feeling you reached the height of your uh, technological career in 1986, and Fair. I feel that like bulletin boards, <laughs> BBSs, as you would call them, you were pretty, you know, pretty good with that. I figure mainframe be right up your alley because I don't know how, um, like mainframe in today's world might be declared redundant and have no job. So I think that maybe you know your These 80- mainframes still do exist quite predominantly. And, and here's the funny thing: and I I saw a re-release of mainframe action figure on card, and I got so excited, pulled off the rack. They'd renamed them to data frame, which doesn't even mean anything. It's oh. not a real term, is it? <laughs> no, and it, it came with the same giant, it looked like a, for, for super nerd, a K-Pro computer is what his accessory was. Like, he's got to put two giant eight-inch floppies in to connect to the, the net. 
data like that's that's their way of modernizing him yes even though people still actually use mainframe systems yes in many jobs yes. it's data frame a brand new term especially in the government still heavily uses mainframe and that's where mainframes working most of the time i assume quick side note question maybe extreme knows this one maybe you do too Miron. but since they're modernizing some terminology do they still call cobra terrorists or is that not a thing anymore I think they still call them terrorists. They changed it a little while ago. They changed it for one of the eco warrior nonsense bullshit they came out with. I think. Oh yeah, the eco warrior stuff was horrible. It, I think they kind of moved on past it and kind of ignore eco warriors ever existed. I don't even it's know. Canon. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. I just wouldn't wondered if they didn't use that term anymore. Like now they're a criminal organization, not a terrorist organization. You know, kind of thing. I do have like uh, on the note of mainframe first. There's a great selection for. On. I'm kind of jealous that I didn't choose that one. Uh, but in the comics, Larry Hama was a big nerd. So anytime he got super interested in anything, he would like force it in. And when mainframe, there was a story about mainframe where Larry went into great detail about how the internet worked. Mm. At that point in time, it was pretty cutting edge stuff that most people didn't understand. And it was all accurate. It was really interesting. Oh. When was that from? Um, Probably mid, mid 90s? Early, yeah, probably early. Early mid nineties. Oh, so way early on, like DARPAnet era type stuff. Yeah, wow, nice. Um, so, who did you have for beer on extreme? I had him as Destro for the Ooh. same techie reasons, but then also for uh, possible, I don't know, global takeover agendas. Now, when I was growing up watching GI Joe, I hope I hope I know where you're going with this. Yeah, you I, probably do. I hope I do. Destro was black. Yes, my, yes, that's yeah. what I was just thinking. Destro's black, right? But he's from Scotland. I mean, that's possible, sure. Oh. But he's royalty from Scotland. He's like a like a like an Ilj, uh, what's the Idris Elba type character. Yeah, know? but he, he can play like a, a, a predominantly African American role, but his roots are somewhere in Europe. I yeah. sure. I think that was just a mistake of the cartoon. I don't. You don't think Scotland. Destro's black? I don't think so. Really? Wow. Is that different in the comics? Well, you, there's no voice really in the comics. Right? Or maybe like how some politicians pretend to be, like when they're in the Southern Baptist Church. <laughs> like, yeah. well, like when Hillary was campaigning, she went on a, a black radio show. I I in no ways tired. And she said, no, she's like, they were talking about barbecue. And she's like, oh, I brought my own sauce. And they're like, you're really pandering to us? Like on the show, it was kind of great. Like on the actual <laughs> show. Like you brought sauce, like uh, you know, your own barbecue, hot sauce. Did they ask you if it was just mayonnaise? <laughs> I think Destro's, yeah. Not bad for Destro. And also weapons, too, right? Destro's the weapons. Yes. He had a Mars. briefcase. He had like a, the, the, the figure, the one I had, had like a little briefcase that had like a sample of his, of his, of his armaments. Yeah, it was kind of like the, like, the, like the guy with the watches in his coat. Yeah. Like, enough to. Well, like, he had the, the sweet ass rocket. On his wrist, wrist, yeah. Oh yeah. So he's always walking around in like the airport and stuff. And no one else has weapons, and he has these little rockets all over his wrist. And yeah, that's fine. And was he with uh, Baroness too? Yes, that was his lady yeah. friend. That Baron, you should be honored. That's a pretty damn good pick. Yeah, yeah. Like, too, like too good for you. Like and and correct me if I'm wrong. Like they they you know kind of hinted at it in the cartoon, but they they are they have a deep deep bond in the comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For they sure. loved each other for reals. How evil could they be? <laughs> you know what? Just yeah, they uh, actually ran away for a while and uh, got went uh, to the straight life, I guess. And then they came. Wink. They came back though, right? Because you can make way more money doing what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, any anything else for Biron? Or should we move on to the next one? Uh, I think we're ready to move on. I'm going to probably lose track of how many we've done. So that's why I keep asking. Um, let's go with uh, Extreme, uh, also known as Brian with a Y. Um, I went with Snake Eyes. And I'm I taking think mine. That, is, that, is that you picked up? Uh, <laughs> Extreme is the, the strong, silent type. I, I have a feeling if Snake Eyes was around in like our today, today's world, he would really enjoy Tough Mudder competitions as well. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't know if, I think he would refuse any kind of award. I think it would be like, you know, whereas Extreme would gladly take a medal, but I think Snake Eyes would actually probably refuse it, but. Um, no, he would take it only if he won. Like the whole thing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like not a participant, yeah, okay. I'm, yeah, that makes more sense there. Mm -hmm. Did you pick Snake Eyes for him too? 
I did, but I'm going to change it now because I had oh. a backup. What's your backup? I also I casted myself as Snake Eyes. Wow. I, my backup, Storm Shadow. <laughs> That's too oh. easy for backup. That's, Storm yeah. Shadow is my favorite character because he's Brian's vaguely Asian looking to me. <laughs> <laughs> So far on this episode, I've been vaguely Mexican and vaguely Asian. Uh, the well, term is I mean, Latinx. I mean, I think, you know, the Hawaiian in you, though, does have some of that, right? Well, I mean, I'm not really. You got some mongoloid blood is what we're oh, saying. You, but I think you, the culture sort of changed the way you look. You become a, a product of your environment. I think you do have some Hawaiian in you. Sure. There we go. I have the ha in me. I was born, just born of the land. I want to see a 23 and me right now. <laughs> I, I did that, and I'm not, I, I was, was told both my parents were Greek, and I'm only about, about maybe 79%. So, um, and the rest is Turkish, right? Uh, on a Kanazi Jew? A little bit. 10% Italian. <laughs> so ten, the Italians got in there too, 10%. Oh, yeah, yeah. They... Then, little Jew, little like Arabian, little, just all the, you know. Persian, vaguely Persian. A little bit in there, yeah. Like, I'm, just Jewish enough to look once for a promo code online. <laughs> but then I'll stop. I've used that joke before. I didn't just come up with it. I just want that on the record. Um, uh, anyone else for Extreme? Or is he Snake Eyes slash Storm Shadow? Which, are they brothers? Here's the spoiler. Are they actually no, brothers? No. They just grew not up together? by blood. Okay. But by clan, right? Yep. Okay. Um, Let's go to. And is uh, in the ninja clan, not the racist clan. <laughs> right. I don't think any of sure Storm Shadow wears a white hood. I just want to make sure everyone knew what I was talking about. <laughs> no one was thinking that until you said it. And now, <laughs> now they can't stop the guy. Right now, there's somebody course, repainting hooded Cobra Commander white um, <laughs> because of what you just said. That's going to be a custom repaint job. Um, okay, over to me. What do you got for me? I had you as Destro. Oh, thank you. I accept that. Willingly. Yeah. Um, because if you literally just painted your safe face silver right now, you would look like Destro. Yeah. Especially if I was like last episode, I was clean shaven too. So. Yeah. And, and you're all about finding a good bargain as mm -hmm. part of your heritage. Uh, Destro's always wheeling and dealing. That's true. Destro would totally do a Kickstarter for a book, for a game. <laughs> he definitely would. <laughs> well, he would, if it doesn't fund, he would self fund it. Hey, wait, I did. Uh, I don't want to get into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you know, a politician could vote for themselves. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's my... Uh, According to Paul Rudd, Parks <laughs> right. and Rec. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Vote for yourself, that's cheating. That's, that's right. Um, extreme? I had you as Dial Tone. Oh, I don't know. Um, he Sounds was like the radio guy okay. who did the ham radio stuff and then transferred it over into the I'm okay with that. At first, I thought he like was a, like a dispatch operator or something. <laughs> he ran the PBX at GI Joe headquarters. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, like I could see Breaker like making sure like um, we went with a dissolved wipe instead of like a star wipe, and it's like it's not really you know on, on all the video communication. He, he would say things like, "Let me send you to Duke's voicemail. He's not available right now." Yeah, um, and I'm sorry, and Flint knows you from what? <laughs> May I ask what this is regarding? Yeah. All right, have we covered all the uh, GI Joes? Well, I, 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 one I had for myself, because Brian mentioned he Oh, had, sorry, yeah, we'll do, yeah. Uh, I had myself as Bazooka. Oh, I actually was going to pick Bazooka for you. I really yeah. had. Because he he's kind of a, a lovable lunkhead guy, and he fires his Bazooka under his arm, which I always thought was weird, <laughs> and he still fired a laser beam. So how accurate could you be, on, like, holding it like that? Well, but Bazooka's so good, maybe he is still accurate with that. Or maybe and also, the first time I played paintball... I wore camouflage pants and a football jersey. And they said, what's that about? I'm Bazooka from G.I. Joe. And everyone was like, leave now, nerd. <laughs> like, nerds play paintball, but you're, you're, you're not welcome here. Yeah. Um, I, I want to go with uh, Cobra Commander for myself for the same reason as, uh, as Skeletor. I like the Hood or steel face? Um, I, I really prefer the hooded face. I know it's taboo to say the, the hood, but. Uh, I do, and here's why. Um, the steel face was too close to the Cobra Viper uh, nugs, and he needs to set himself apart. Yeah, because Cobra with the steel face, I mean, you put him next to Cobra officers, they have a black face mask. He's good, but you're right. Viper and probably like a Hiss driver, all these yeah. other things have a similar face mask there. So, and Extreme, you had yourself a Snake Eyes as well? 
Yep. Of course you did. <laughs> are, are all your self ego on this guy? The yeah, coolest all guy Joe there is. Like the best guy in all of them. I mean, I picked Cringer. Oh, the that's best true. <laughs> <laughs> Very valid point. If anyone takes anything in this episode, remember the extreme picked Cringer for himself. I picked He Man. Um, let's kind of go a little, um, you know, a uh, little different realm, a little different universe here. And I'm just going in the list that I wrote them down in, no real reason. But uh, let's go into the, the vast Golden Girls universe. Um, this is not uh, a typical nerd category. I thought it was fun to throw a few. Because initially, this idea for do, doing this came from me thinking about foursomes. Um, and that's generally, yes, there are other characters, but essentially there are four. And obviously, it's easier to expand outside of that. Because in a foursome, you know, there's always somebody shitty that you don't want to be, at least one. It's kind of funny to make somebody in our actual foursome, like, you know, be that person. Whereas, it, you know, when we get to Marvel, they could all be cool guys. You know what I mean? But when you're left with just the four. So in the Golden Girls. Uh, did we have to leave it limited to the four? You don't have to. I just, okay. I didn't think further than that. So I looked at the want, entire cinematic universe. Yeah, if you want to. Now, did you go with the expanded universe, like from the comics? Uh, no, more from the uh, fan fiction. Okay. Let's, like is Stan one of your picks? Uh, you'll see. It's for it's for uh, Brian. Okay. Well, I'll start with let's start with Brian then. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Dorothy for Brian, and um, I think Dorothy is by far the most manly of the group. I think Brian is the most manly of the group. We all like to think we do manly things at times, but when it all is said and done, I think it comes down to. And I think Dorothy, you know, she can be pretty savage when she wants to be, and I think when Brian wants to be, he's got it under control. He can give you, you know, he, he can like, you know, if there's a nerd out there and he wants to just burn, he can do that. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind saying something to hurt somebody's feelings. Dor Dorothy always hurt people's feelings. So I think uh, Dorothy. Straight shooter, Dorothy. What's that? She was a straight shooter. Very straight shooter, yeah. And, you know, so, okay, Viron, what do you got? I have him as uh, Chewy from the, uh, the, he was the cook at the hotel they bought, uh, played by one Cheech Marin. <laughs> so at first i mean when you said the expanded universe i didn't think about chewy i thought maybe um in the pilot episode there was a gay guy that just disappeared so he's up, he's he's in the pool too well it was that time period where some things could happen rapidly what epidemic say going on it, say, say the word gay uh, aids do you have aids i didn't i didn't link those two but you did okay but on the record um, I thought there was maybe a very special episode where they talked about it. Uh, there was the Mario Lopez episode. That could be extreme as well. Could be said he's sort of, you know, pseudo Mexican. Yeah, he, he's got a kind of a south of the border flavor to him. <laughs> Extreme's more Tex Mex, though. Yeah, like a burrito, not a taco. <laughs> right, right. So, any other reason on the chewy thing is, is straight up the, the heritage look? Is that? Uh, that, and I don't, I don't know. I, I could see, I could see like four. Uh, elderly women taking a shine to Brian, hmm. maybe in a romantic fashion. Like I kind of saw that sexual tension on the show, yeah. so I, I see that happening in real life. And it's also great that you know before in this universe he had an entire career of his own. Um, you know, a, a well-known comedy duo as well. So much right, he was in Tin Tin Cup with uh, that golf movie. Kevin Costner as well. Yeah. So I mean, much like you know Zlurpcast before the Zlurpcast TV. Cheech and Chong was already a thing. Stream and I were already a thing. Or he said, and hey, we got snapping pussy and stinky pussy. Yeah, we got all kinds of pussy, whatever you want. That one's for Todd as well. <laughs> the next episode, we will cover who everybody will be in. Um, what in Dust Till Dawn? Yeah, Dust Till Dawn, yes. <laughs> um, so anyone else for uh, Extreme? I will put him uh, as Rose, and here's why. <laughs> Okay. I was so afraid to give somebody Rose because you're telling them they're an oh, idiot. No, no, no. <laughs> but Rose <laughs> has she has uh, she has ideas, she has convictions, and she's passionate about them. Hmm. And you know, Rose will say this one time in Saint Olaf, and like Brian will say, you know, he lived in a bunch of different places. He'll mention this one time, like Brian and Old Slurpcast. You talked about games you invented this one time, or. Someone threw you in the garbage, I think, one time. All those, all those things happen. Sore yeah, subject. All those things happen. <laughs> Sore subject, but had to be covered in all three phases of Zorkcast. 
So that's not a bad, that's a, an insightful rose pick. It's, just, it's a, a scary pick to tell someone they're a rose. Yeah, oh, I know, but. One could argue, as the only surviving as member survivor, in the real world, yes. um, I mean, extreme, it may out, probably will outlive all of us. Well, so. yeah, he's by far the fittest. Yeah. yeah. So there is that. But he doesn't have insurance, so maybe not. Yeah! Rose had St. Olaf insurance. It was like, <laughs> like it was like, you put a couple of carrots down per month. It was a weird, weird kind of thing. Um, anything else for Extreme? Extreme, who did you have yourself as? Rose. Whoa. Oh. Mm. Okay. Any reason? Or because you didn't want to give it to anyone else? This was the most difficult category for me. I'm not very familiar with Golden Girls at all. Here's the thing, neither am I, and I forgot it was a subject, and I was literally looking at the Wikipedia when, when we <laughs> That's why you came up with Chewy, that no one yeah. knows. Well, I, I vaguely <laughs> knew that Cheech yeah. Barron was in it, and so I looked, Cheech Barron, Golden Girls. I watch it on Hallmark Channel at 12.30 every night, so. Um, um, I will say, by the way, I gave myself Rose as well, only because I felt bad about calling everyone stupid. So. Uh, let's move on to uh, Biron. And I'm giving Biron Blanche, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Blanche is a slut. Yeah. Biron, yeah, is a, she is. <laughs> Biron is a game slut. He has no loyalty to any tabletop game. As you, you're going to see in these episodes, I mean, his gaming group that I used to be a part of, they move on to games so quickly, you won't even have your shit fully assembled, let alone painted, before we say, hmm, that was last month's game. We've moved on. They won't even have taken the release agent off the molds and we've yeah, They're like, Todd, can you order in? It's like, guys, I got the stuff in. They're like, Todd, we have bad news for you. We don't <laughs> play that game anymore. <laughs> so I think based on your game sluttery, it, Blanche has to be uh, the, the, the pick for me on this one. Um, sure. What do you guys have for him? I'll be honest, I had, the, I had him as Blanche for the exact same reason. Perfect. <laughs> I had Sophia. Mm, okay. I forget why. I don't know. <laughs> this, made, this made sense at work when I was looking all this stuff up. I don't know. Um, let's. Uh, Biron, you have one for yourself or no? Uh, I was. I was going to go with uh, B. Arthur. Um, Dorothy. Okay. Um, you are not Dorothy. You are. No, no, you are not Dorothy. You've already got two people as blind. I think if it's, if two people say you're somebody, you're somebody. That's, not, that's, I mean, that's, I accept that. I don't have a problem with it. That's definitely a rule in this one. Um, and so let's move on to a Valdrick. Um, I'm going with Sophia just because she's the oldest and Valdrick's the oldest. Uh, I will say <laughs> this. The actress was the youngest. Uh, right. He's still, the actual actress was the youngest. Right? Yeah. And um, Sophia also, I think she's, uh, she's funny. She's got some witty retorts. I think when Mike wants to be kind of like quick and funny, he can be. Um, but like, when he's he not went, stoned out of his gourd. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, <laughs> If you guys ever had that oh. one prof in, in college or even high school where you're just like, dude, this guy gets fucking high. That's what, that's what Mike students <laughs> said about him. So that's pretty obvious. He was like Donald Sutherland in uh, Animal House. He was. And like Kiefer Sutherland and everything else. Yeah. They're like, doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, so what do you guys have for Mike? Anyone? I have him as, as Blanche. Okay. And the only reason is because I remember vividly a story of I was banging this girl I was working with at the pizza place in the bathroom. I don't know if he actually said that story or I imagined it. So it Mike, has, Mike has a lot of, uh, he, he can almost be Rose in a way, not for the dumb side, but for the, this one time. Yeah. Like, starting sentences with this one time. Cause I, I think Mike has a lot of those. Like he'll say, yeah, I'm banging these two chicks in the pizza place. And then I find out I'm allergic to tomatoes and I shit my pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, but sometimes I'll still eat tomatoes knowing that'll happen just because I want pizza. Right. Yeah. So he can't remember if he's eating the tomato or eating out this chick on her period. He doesn't know. These like are petty. the stories. What happens at Pizza Hut, Mike? Mm -hmm. Right. What happens at Pizza Hut did not stay at Pizza Hut. In fact, this one time at Pizza Hut, all of this did happen. Was that and also, player? Mike's a bit of a, he, he's not a game slut like I am, but he's a gamer slut. And let me explain. There are a lot of people who I just can't stand that still think Mike is like his, their best friend. And <laughs> everyone knows Mike. Yeah. And some of those people are bad. And, <laughs> and Mike's on friendly terms with them. 
So like Blanche, even if it's against, you know, she, not that she has any positive judgment, but I mean, she'll, you know, she'll definitely date the bad boy. And um, Mike will still befriend people that we've all said are on the pay no mind list. Yeah. He will still kind of accept them. And, oh, you know, yeah, I remember you from, like, hey, do you guys still talk to Extreme? Like, ah, uh, you got to, like, make up something real quick. Oh, no. To cover for all of us that don't want to see this person again. But, um, you know, so, yeah, I, I appreciate that reference on, on there to Mike. Any, mm -hmm. Anything else for Mike? I had Mike as Dorothy. Okay. Yeah. As the uh, voice of reason amongst oh, okay. the chaos. Yeah, Dorothy. Uh, yeah, Dorothy, you had yourself as Dorothy? Yeah. Yeah, Dorothy is... Um, you know, she was the authoritative one in that. And I think Mike can be when he needs to be. So that's a good choice. And the most testosterone of all four of us, just like Dorothy has the most of anyone. That's why, that's why I picked for Brian, that most manly. So. Yeah. What do you got for me? I had you as Dorothy, and let me tell you why. Okay, thank you. We all want to, everyone wants to be Dorothy, by the way. This is kind of a trick question. Dorothy can hold a grudge both on the show and in real life. Mm. And I suspect you are very much the same. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I definitely am a grudge bearer as well. I do remember a lot. Of doesn't she? Didn't she even on her dying bed hate hate Rose? The actress. Like the, the act, B. Arthur hated, uh, hated, hated Betty, Betty White. Yeah, Betty White in, really? in real life. Yes. Oh. Really? Yes. Or I dreamt it. I can see. Hating, I don't know. I can see you're hating somebody. <laughs> On, on the mod cast, but not yeah. both of those. Well, cause she thought she was a ditz and everything like that. And, and, and Betty White was like, I had no problem with her. She just hated me. Or I, I dreamt this whole thing up in some weird ambient fueled hallucination. Did, was it in the fan fiction that you wrote? Could be. <laughs> Might have been. Uh, any other picks for me? I had for you, Sophia. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Just because Sophia's got the wittiest remarks, and again, that wit just comes through with you. So very, very quick. I, yeah, I'm good with that one. I don't like what Biron's doing right now. <laughs> it, was, it was what Mike just did to you. What did he do? Wait, he didn't do that. Did he do blowjob? Mike? What? A little bit. Uh, speaking of that image that you just did, um, uh -huh. I saw the other day. Unrelated, although we are going to get to wrestling. There was an awesome Shawn Michaels gif where someone was like yelling at him in the crowd. This is from like early DX when they were super over the line. And he's like, here's you. And he was like, ah, it's like this kid in the crowd. And it's an awesome <laughs> gift of that. It's so great. But he, he soon found the Lord a few years after. But at the time, though, he was uh, pretty over the line. So, uh, Shreem, what do you got for me? I have you as Blanche. As, mm -hmm. uh Going with the more entertaining, funny aspect, I think. Okay. He's got good. a bit of a southern bell in him, too, when you think about it. I, I guess. I don't have the sexual <laughs> prowess of, of lunch, but I, I do appreciate the sentiment, of course. Um, let's move on. Next on my completely random list, we've got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the entire universe. If you want to go beyond the four, you can. I'm picking mine from the four turtles. But I don't want to like, uh, if Biron has some great, um, you know, crazy, another ambient fueled fucking mind warp thing that he wants to do and somehow say that Mike is bebop, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to say Mike is fucking bebop though, because that's a goddamn insult to bebop. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's kick it off with, um, I'm going to go with Biron first. And I'm going to say, Based on just the intro song alone, Donatello does machines. And I think that Biron would, much like in the movie Her, which we talked about, on, I think, on a previous episode, <laughs> I think he would do a machine if given the option and if given the capabilities. Donatello does machines. Is a fleshlight a machine? Yeah. I mean, is it power? The definition of machine, Mike, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is anything that does work. Yeah. Is that oh, yeah. a machine? Doesn't have to have like a, a some kind of uh, motor or anything. My flashlight does have a motor. It's oh, got so, it. you're, so you're covered on both. <laughs> what do you guys have for Biron? I have him as Raphael. Oh, okay. Why is that? Uh, Raphael was spoke his mind regardless of if it was appropriate or not, and that's definitely Byron. So yeah. 
He definitely he does not care. He does not care about oh, aliens. He doesn't care about um, a- any of that kind of stuff. And I'd like to think that even though they all have their weapon of choice, I'd like to think Raphael had a, a bigger armory of sorts too. I'd like to think he had besides the uh, he had the, the what's that? Fine. So, yeah, he, he had more. So, what do you extreme? What do you have for a uh, beer? Hunter? I also had him as Ralph. Oh, okay. Same reason. Yeah, rude but crude, rude and so, crude, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, this is kind of an it's 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 an easy one to get uh, backstory from because the the theme song says Raphael is cool, uh, is cool, cool but, but rude. Crude. I always thought it was rude, by the way, mm-hmm. and then I looked it up and it was crude. I didn't know that. That's more fitting, I think. Yeah, but you're both. You're rude and crude. Yeah, and, and <laughs> usually nude but mostly rude and crude. So, yeah, I'll give you that one. Um, Miron, what did you have for yourself? Uh, I had myself as, uh, what's it, Casey, the hockey oh, match guy. Yeah. I don't know, just because he looked cool. Yeah. I, I was never into Teenage Mutant. I, I had it when they were black and white and more dark is when I was into it. So. Well, yeah, the original Turtles, oh, yeah. they all had red bandanas, mm-hmm. um, and they were not nice creatures. <laughs> You know, and it wasn't. They didn't eat pizza that much. I don't think even did the did the comic change, or was it the the cartoon and toy line first, and then they had to make comics to go with that. Is that kind of how that went? Initially, it was just a comic, right? And no, then, I know, but like to to make them family friendly, that wasn't. Yeah, I think the you know, comics, the later comics, mirrored the TVs. Yeah, TV. yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, because they couldn't have kids watching the cartoon and then buying these ultraviolet comics. So because the <laughs> comics that were out when the cartoon first started weren't the same they were it was you know the original is it kevin eastman right yeah okay so you're on you've got so you're gonna take uh rafael as well or no you oh casey casey jones yeah um let's go to uh ryan extreme um i'm going michelangelo because i think that you are a party dude and when there's pizza involved i think you can become more of a party dude um i think back to um, this, this will come out in other episodes, by the way, when we talk about running events, running tournaments, and also Blood Bowl. You were the, uh, the party host of not only all these Lurpy Bowls over the years, but the Friday night gatherings that went with Slurpee Bowl. And those are things that, like, I, I don't like doing that. Like, I wouldn't mind running an event, but I don't like doing, like, party hosts. I don't like, because I always have to worry about, like, what, you know, everyone having a good time. And you kind of had that nice kind of line of, I'm going to care about having a good time, but if you're going to be kind of a sad sack as well, I'm going to move on anyway. So you were having your own party, even if other people were not having it, you were a party dude. And I think you may have also said, never pay full price for cold pizza. And Michelangelo <laughs> has said that many times. Uh, anything else for okay. Extreme? What else you got for him? I had him as uh, Shredder or Leonardo. Yeah, I had him as Leonardo. Okay, why is that? Well, Leonardo, because he's serious, but still knows how to have fun. Like, he hangs out with the rowdy bunch, but deep down, he's like, I wish people take things more seriously. (laughs) Maybe people need to take Blood Bowl more seriously. Do you think Leonardo ever had that kind of, like, wild side to him, though? Like, he was a... like he was a uh, Amish (laughs) with that Rumschlager or whatever they go on. (laughs) Rumspringer? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Rumschlager is a German sex move. That's completely different. Um, yeah, I, I can see that a little bit. I think that, um, you know, go, going by not the extreme you see on Zorbcast TV or Zorbcast episodes, but, you know, you get a few beverages in them. Again, you get that pizza there, and he becomes Michelangelo, and I see him kind of being a party, party guy. And also... Um, like maybe Leonardo went way too far in his younger years, like heroin level far, <laughs> and then he had to... <laughs> come to jesus or come to ninja training yeah come to now school he's serious he, he yeah. sympathizes and empathizes with ralph Raphael and michelangelo but he knows you can't can only take that so far he's like i've i've been there yeah like fellow hey fellow teenage mutant ninja turtles um i've been there. <laughs> yes very nice and hey, Shredder, just because Shredder's ripped. Shredder's great, yeah. And compared uh, to all of us, Brian's ripped. Only my memory, Shredder, I believe, Oroku Saki, actual name. I could be wrong on that. 
I the action figure that. had the worst head, like it was manufactured at a different plant somewhere. Oh, yeah, it, was a, it was a rough. <laughs> it was you could squish it. Uh, and and it, I mean, if you're gonna be called Shredder, that's pretty awesome because it could be worse. You could be Krang. Nobody wants to be fucking Krang. So. Or Living Krang. belly of a giant. Krang's the little guy, not the bit. What's the big guy called? No one ever knew. It, I always liked the Krang character because it reminded me of Master Blaster from Thunderdome. Yeah, very Master Blaster. If he was on his feet, almost, uh, yeah, just that little tiny little little slump. And, and then he, he expanded his career later, became Meatwad on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Same, same ball of meat. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's move on. I'm going to go with, uh, did I miss any on that one? Or no, still on, tur still on Turtle. Sorry, I meant on an extreme Turtle. Oh, I had myself as Casey Jones. Oh, okay. Because I think everybody should want to be Casey Jones. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. He's did he get with April? Do you think? Or did she fuck the turtles? I can't remember what happened. She yeah. fucked everybody. Yeah. She's the blind. That secret of the ooze, that was her. Okay. When they did yeah, the Go Ninja did. rap, she's a squirter. That was already, that was determined. That was That's already. Piss, right, Mike? When they squirt, it's just piss. <laughs> You're the biology guy, I don't know. But then you teach biology to not biology. Then definitely, yeah. Yeah. I will say, that's another one for Todd. For, uh, but it's that much, it's piss. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Viron is doing, like, time stamping for, like, Todd moments. But that's another one. <laughs> yeah. throw, that, throw that one in. Um, Stop talking about squirters, guys. I put, uh, I put Valdrick as Raphael because I think Mike can be crude, but he's Raphael under – like he he gained control of his crudeness, so Mike is selectively crude. He's aged out of it. He's more yeah, right. He's gotten over it. And I don't know. I don't. It's hard to tell. I was thinking about which turtle might wear flannel, and um, I, I I drew a blank for that one. Probably Splinter. So I thought about Mike as Splinter as well. But I was trying to stick with the turtles. But so I would say either uh, either an aged out Raphael or Splinter. What do you guys have for Mike? I had him as Splinter. Okay. Because I'm ageist. <laughs> Not because he's a teacher. You didn't he also say. likes Skaven. Oh, that's yeah. Skaven. And Veerman. Yeah. And all the other versions. Veerman, the four stripe Adidas Skaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's one better. It's clearly better. Uh, Extreme, what do you have for Mike? I had him as Donatello. Okay. Uh, for Fan of science? The, yeah, the science element again and the wisdom and. Okay. I had me as yes. Donatello too, so. As Donatello as well? Yeah. Okay. Donatello was the only action figure I ever bought for them. I had all, all four, obviously. They were amazing quality action figures for the time. when they. Well, first what I liked was, since I was like, a, I was really into accessories of, on action figures. Ironically, now when I have the Star Wars ones I showed in another episode, can't find shit for them. But at the time, though, I was more organized as a kid, which is weird. Um, I had, so the turtles either came with or it was an extra package to buy. They actually sold like weapon racks with extra weapons. So if you wanted more ninja stars, more katanas, you had all that. I thought that was the coolest thing. Like not only do you arm them, but I have all this backup as well too, ready to go. So I thought that was pretty badass. And we have, um, let's go over to me. I'm, I'm hoping there's no bebop or rock steady in any of these, um, but uh, we'll see. Who wants to go first? I'll go, I'll go. first. I have you. Oh, go ahead. I have you as Leo because you're the leader of our bunch here. Thank you. I had myself as Leo for the same reason. Appreciate it. Here I I'm had you as the bug guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. Baxter Stockman. Yes. <laughs> What's his name? Baxter, Baxter Stockman. Stockman. Oh. Is he Jewish? I don't know. <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> Was he that, or was he what Tob thought his art character was? Oh, let's that's that's not. No. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Mike, I, I have to censor Baron, even though he's in charge of the episodes. Uh, <laughs> I had you as Michelangelo. Okay. Uh, and for okay, the monster aspect of it. Yeah, I'm cool with. I was fine, Michelangelo or Leonardo. Um, if you can merge the two, that would be my perfect character. So. All right, we made it through that one. Um, do we miss anybody? No. Okay, let's go on to wrestling. I know Biron is not as versed, but I bet he did research because he's not going to work during the day. He's going to fucking look this shit up. Um, 
So for wrestling, um, let's start with Valdrick this time. Um, our picks for Valdrick, rather. This is an easy one for me. I couldn't think of anyone else that would fit this, even though I wanted to put more thought into it. I went straight for Mick Foley. Oh, yeah. That was the origin of Cactus Sack. It and was. The flannels, the, the have a nice day, just the fun attitude at all times. Not that Mike's ever done bang, bang, but I bet he would. I bet he's a, he <laughs> would be a finger blaster guy. Came off wrong. Uh, he's a finger blaster guy as well. But finger guns guy as well. So I think there's no other choice. What do you guys have for Mike? I had Mick Foley. Yep, I had that too. Yep, you're on? I had Jake the Snake Roberts. Ooh. Oh, he was my favorite as a kid. Because last time I saw him being interviewed on a YouTube death spiral, he, he looks like he's, his, his hip was bothering him, and I know Mike's got some hip issues. <laughs> That's why. Well, here's the thing. That, <laughs> and some heroin issues, but, you know, we don't I was going to say – there was a time when Jake wouldn't show up to a booking unless you had crack ready to go for him. Yeah. Same with Mike. He won't come to gaming night unless we got the rock for him. No, yeah. unless you got Diet Coke ready for him. Yes. So, okay. Diet Coke. Good. Coke and Diet Coke. There's some similarities there. I like that. Um, yeah, that was good. So, uh, Mike, you for yourself? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's, let's, go to, um, let's go to Brian Mitchell, or Extreme, as many know him as. Um, I have you as, this is going to be kind of a, a pick that Biron is not going to know and Mike might know, but um, I also know Extreme likes this guy. I'm going to go with M-Dog Matt Cross for you. Um, pretty much, he's mostly independent. He was in Lucha Underground as well as Son of Havoc. He's exactly what I imagine you look like with your gray beard and a mask. Like it's almost, they look, you guys look exactly the same with mask on, just that lower part. Um, I also like that Matt Cross has his own uh, like a um, line of clothing. Uh, is it forever wrestling or wrestling? Wrestling, wrestling is forever. forever. Yeah. And that reminds me of the branding discussion of extreme and creating Slurpee bowl and this ongoing branding, regardless of if, you know, he's not in a major promotion or it doesn't matter. He's still keeping that going. Extreme will always keep the Slurpee alive and, and ever flowing. So I'm going to put you, so it's not a, a high profile pick, but it was one that fit pretty well. And he's an indie guy and extreme as well. Indie, both definitions of indie. <laughs> That's a good pick. I like that. Yeah. Anyone else got extreme? What do you got for him? I have I have you as Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> because <laughs> I picture again, I, I put it as in in reference to all four of us. You yeah. would be the only one that could probably get to the top rope. <laughs> and you probably killed someone before. <laughs> I, uh, when I was younger, before I knew about the rest of Jimmy Snuka, I was a Snuka fan. Yeah. What I liked about him as a kid was he didn't look like he was really in shape, and yet he was the high flyer. Yeah. That was, it was so, it was so non-Vince McMahon. You know what I mean? Like, Vince is very image conscious, has always been that way from the early 80s to now, and that's a guy that you don't expect to jump off a cage, and he looks like, a, you know, kind of just a, a, a chunky kind of Hawaiian guy, and it's not really... Again, Hawaii. I had a wrestling magazine as a kid, and it had this like weird looking, like black and white photo, part of a story of Snuka jumping off the top rope at some. I don't know if he was in a gym or what, not gym, like a bingo hall or something, but his shoulder blades were like touching the drop ceiling in this place. Oh, wow. and I used to think that was so cool, but then I was like, well, once you elevate the ring, a normal ceiling it really isn't that high. He probably could have just stood up. and like, he probably couldn't it. avoid having that happen. <laughs> as you watch clips of him now, he didn't really jump so much as he just fell. Yeah, okay, yeah. it was a controlled yeah. fall. Now, yeah, we, when he was in there, wasn't it technically against the rules to go off the top rope? Like, they'd start counting as you climbed up there, and you could I only mean, do it in, like, in like belt matches, I think? It's, I mean, it's still technically against the rules, but – they know you're going up there for a short amount of time. So theoretically, an extreme would know this best of all, because you probably know the rules of wrestling better than all of us. But I would imagine if you stood at the top rope, the refs should be counting, right? Should be. Should be. Yeah. Like, I, I want to see what, like, have a guy, like a temp ref, that, that wants to do good on the job and, like, really looks at the rules and counts someone off for being on the top rope too long and just <laughs> there, qualifies there them. On uh, AEW, I know we're dating this episode, but on AEW last night where they started to count, but it was the no – uh, no disqualification kind of match so it was kind of came up like oh, wait a minute what are you doing and <laughs> they even you know so um what did you have for i'm gonna play? i'm gonna go with cody oh okay because cody is 
the mastermind and the leader of AEW, and Brian's the mastermind and leader of uh, Zlurcast, and both of them have this purest philosophy. You know, Cody knows all the moves, all of the, and is really into the pure aspect of wrestling as well as the showmanship. And that's that's what I think of. So. And it's his favorite wrestler right now too. Yeah. This isn't the Cody from Street Fighter, the one that had the knife and. Uh, no, this is uh, Hagar from Streets of Rage. Or okay. Final Fight. Final Fight. Final Fury. Final Fight. Streets of Rage was Sega. Oh, that's right. Final Fight. Yeah, the merch. It was Capcom still. Extreme. Do you have yourself? I had myself as Ultimate Warrior. Ooh. Um, kind of like not super. Uh, I don't know. With his promos and stuff, I was thinking were not clear in thought and his matches being super short and quick, but making an impact in a short period of time. I like it. Two, two, two more reasons. I'll jump on that one. Um, you, Ultimate Warrior, legally changed the name to Warrior. You have changed your name to Extreme? Or no? Yeah. 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 Everybody thought Ultimate Warrior was dead and he wasn't dead. Everyone thought Extreme it was dead. I mean, no more Slurpee Bowls. Like, he obviously must have passed. There's no, no more Slurpee Bowls. Turns out he just didn't want to do it anymore. Go figure, you know. It was a rumor. Um, is is go- Stream also the actor from The Wonder Years? Uh, Josh Javiano, <laughs> a.k.a. Yeah. Brian, Brian Warner, a.k.a. Marilyn Manson. All the same, obviously. Obviously. It's not like we have the internet to check on that shit. No. Um, let's go to uh, Biron. I've got Biron as Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase because he says, and I quote, everybody's got a price and everyone's going to pay. And you have a quote that's, what does it pay? And it's kind of like those two sentences merged together. <laughs> um, it's both a, a, a real question of what does it actually pay? And it's also a response to a, a, a like a, it's a non-interested response. Like who wants to volunteer for a rules committee? What does it pay? Like almost with a period, not even a question mark. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just seems like too perfect. And I can see you laughing at people that don't have a lot of money. I can see you doing stunts like, you know, I'm going to give you $100 if you can dribble this basketball real fast. And then like have your sidekick, um, we'll say Vincent, you know, to not, uh, you know, kick the ball out of his hands to, to, you know, that kind of thing. I can see you orchestrating all of that. And if you're a wrestler, after you beat somebody, I can see you putting a $100 bill in their mouth, um, both from the, the, hey, get this hundred germs on your mouth. There's probably Coke on it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and stripper ass. And stripper, strip, stripper right. quim. Yeah. And uh, also because you can just dish out hundreds like no big deal. So to mm-hmm. me, it's like a pick that makes sense. And also uh, like him, my, my wealth is mostly fake. Yeah. Well, and I, you know what? I could also see you not winning an actual belt and making your own belt. Right. That. So I can see that as well. Stolen Valor. Oh. I love doing that. I always forget Million Dollar Man did those challenges to the crowd, and then someone brings it up, and we're like, oh, yeah, that was great. I don't know oh, why yeah. I don't think about it. Because <laughs> then as soon as they would win, he would fuck him over, or have Virgil fuck him over. It was great. <laughs> what did you have for extreme, for uh, Biron? Me? Yeah. I had, I'm pretty proud of this one. Um, I had him as King Kong Bundy. Ooh. Uh, why are you because... proud of that? that doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> okay, I want to say I also had him as King Kong Bundy. Oh, but I will switch real quick. So go ahead. I had myself as an uglier version of King Kong Bundy. <laughs> George the Animal Steel. First, I had him. First, I that had him as my, Al Bundy. That was my backup. <laughs> I was gonna go King Kong Bundy, then Al Bundy, and I said, no, he's Ted Bundy. <laughs> Ted Bundy's handsome. Uh, okay, extreme. Go ahead. Just the uh, crazy rage monster of uh, King Kong Bundy, and then the appearance and stuff I thought was hilarious. Uh, the only actual connection I could come up with is they both had diabetes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <Tripling>. <laughs> yeah, they both had uh, implants, too? No, that's my diabetes sensor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can just put the thing on it, right? Yeah. Now, I believe they both also cameoed on 80s TV shows. I believe King Kong Bundy was on Small Wonder. I could be wrong on that. But I he think was he- on a couple of shows, yeah. Oh, Jesse the Body was on Small Wonder, by the way. King Kong Bundy might have been on... What the hell show? What, I, yeah. Maybe Boy Meets World? More, more of a 90s show. I don't remember, it's though. part of the TJF series, I think, right? Yeah, if he, if he, I don't remember what he was. He was on a couple, though. Um, was it Fred Savage's Uglier Brother was on that show? 
Yeah, Ben Savage. Yeah. You, you say he's uglier? Yeah, and that's saying something because Fred Savage yeah, is that That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not related to Randy Savage as well. Fun no. Fact. No relation. Um, so, Biron, what did you have as yourself? Did you have, oh, oh, George Animal Steel. Yeah. So, I respect a man I, that can part his hair on his back. When I first got into <laughs> watching wrestling, he was like, besides Macho Man and then like Ultimate War, but like he was one of my favorites to watch because he was just nuts. And then, like, I remember like my dad telling me, like, I think he's actually a pretty smart guy, though. And like, I'm like, no, you know, because he has the green tongue. Yeah. He, was, he had a uh, stuffed animal that he called mine. And it would, he would say mine, mine. And it would, and like, if you stole mine, he'd freak out. And he stole Elizabeth once. Yeah, um, he had a whole, there's a whole storyline with him, like, being in love with Miss Elizabeth and yeah. protecting her when Randy would yell well, at he would, him. He would bust He's a school, He was a school teacher. A yeah, school was, teacher and an author. Yeah. School teacher. He was a math teacher. He would bite the turnbuckle open and it, it spray the, the foam yeah. and, you know, and everything everywhere. And just, um, he was just nuts. So, yeah, it was, that's a good pick. What do you guys have for me? I had you as uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay. Mainly because he knew what it meant to be on brand. He was the <laughs> king of branding. Yeah. Stone Cold is a... Uh, he always know like not only is he phenomenal like wrestling ring general the things that go with real pro wrestling but from a from a taking to the next level like there's been no I mean I think Vince has even said there's been no bigger draw um, even in Hulk Hogan era even the the Rock and even mo more modern John Cena it was Stone Cold because when the music hit you know it was on and while I wasn't the number one Stone Cold fan, I liked him I wasn't number one Stone Cold fan during his prime i like the rock more um but it was just th there was none bigger as far as uh, personality goes and and i also would like to hit various bosses i've had with bed pants with them in the hospital too <laughs> much like stone cold yeah, his, his entrance music was so cool I, I forget where we we discussed somewhere uh, i think it was on a podcast with my brother uh the entrance musics were like the first few notes you could just get a pop from the crowd just on those few notes alone. So like that glass breaking, just boom. Well, the glass right breaking is, is the easy part because that's immediately, that, that's awesome. Yeah. But I believe, and I could be wrong on this, but I think I read that Stone Cold heard Bulls on Parade when it came out from Rage Against the Machine and said, you know, they go to their, at the time, Jim Johnston, who did all the music for WWE, um, like, give me something like that song, how it goes, dun -dun, dun -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. and if you listen to the Stone Cold theme song, it's sort of that same kind of style there. Um, so I think that's kind of, but he, I don't know who, if it was his idea for the glass breaking or what, but it was genius because it was, you know, and then they did the same thing with The Rock. You hear, if you smell what The Rock's cooking. Before the song, you know, Edge then did, You Think You Know Me. That was his, both his song, and then even when he changed music, they still kept You Think You Know Me before his song. So I think that was kind of a ongoing, we should put a sound effect, like, so it's immediate reaction. Didn't Undertaker have, like, the, the bell, bell sound? Yeah, the bell as well. Like, you want that first note or that first sound. It's, that sets that, the crowd off. Yeah. I think um, Mick Foley, when he did the car crash, there was a screech yeah, to start it. That was good. Um, so there's a lot of that, like, in, especially in the late 90s, where they were all like, we got to milk this, like, sound effect, then song thing. For the, the highest pop possible so they tried to do that with ricochet they had the gunshot yeah no no and i and i think i like his music uh besides like your ricochet itself but it's yeah. the gunshot and it's do they does he now say one and only to start it i think they might i think they might have changed it to, or to do a gunshot and then say one and only yeah, it's gunshot first because it used to just start with the music then go one and only oh okay now it's gunshot. the first time i heard that i was like Oh God, no! And yeah, it just sound its just bad. It's cartoony. Yeah. Extreme. What do you have for me? I have you as Macho Man uh, for the uh, promo work and the entertainment level in general. I feel I always felt like whenever Macho Man was on the screen, like everybody's eyes had to turn to him because he was so captivating. Yeah, I, I take that as a compliment. One of my favorites of all time, and uh, uh, Downers Grove as well. He went to uh, Downers Grove High School, Downers Grove North. I believe. And uh, yeah, that's a great one. So Macho Man, and um, I think that the fact that imitations of him are still a thing nonstop, that's like more people imitate Macho Man than Hulk Hogan, which is pretty insane if you think about it. Like, 
how much of that is because of Slim Jim? I don't know. I, th I think in popular culture it is, but not in the wrestling world. When you look at like like Jay Lethal, his imp like his Macho Man is unbelievable. It is, yeah. It's so good, and he's still doing it. And I think Macho Man, I think I don't know if he's told him directly. No, he, he told told Lanny. Yeah, yeah, Lanny said he has Lanny's blessings. Put that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just one of those. But I mean, I I think I read that Macho because I mean Jay Lethal's been doing it for a long time, maybe even before Macho died. I could be wrong though, but um, and enough where he may have knew of it, but. It, yeah, it could. I think in popular culture, the Slim Jim's part of it. I think you you can tell when someone says, when someone mentions Macho Man, and if they say Slim Jim in their impression, you know they're not a Macho Man or wrestling fan. You know they're a normie. They're a normie. We don't want those. But if they're a wrestling fan, they go straight to, oh, yeah. You go straight to, oh, yeah. And they immediately <laughs> do that, like, you know, you know that the whole, all, the, whole, the whole bit. Even with the mouth, even like the crooked mouth and all that kind of stuff. So, Mike, who did you have for me? Jimmy Hart. Ooh, okay. Mouth of the South. Man, that guy, when I was, that guy never stopped promoing. Never. <laughs> it's and unbelievable. He, he that uh, extreme, the, the promo value, the entertainment value, even though he didn't wrestle. But I loved him. I, I take okay. that one. He's still alive too, right? He was yep. on, uh, oh, he was on one of those Gethard uh, after, the, after Dark Shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard an interesting story about him recently where, he, like, when he first made the move to WWF and they, like, had scripted promos and stuff for him, and, he's, and it was horrible. He's just like, I, you hired me to talk, and now you're trying to put words in my mouth. And so even back then, they were trying to do that to talent instead of just letting them be the talent they are. Well, especially it's wild that Jimmy Hart and Bobby the Brain are, you know, the originators of um, we're going to have a stable that – we do the talking for. They can talk as well, but they also don't have to. And now you're seeing that modern day. We talked recently about, you know, Zelina Vega doing that kind of thing. So I think that um, it's kind of a cool... Uh... Mike's taking the dump. <laughs> oh, my next uh, category is going to be, um, like, who would be most likely to take a dump on the show? And it was Mike. So <laughs> that was weird. Um, I think we can go, let's go to my, I have two categories left, then the bonus one, which will happen when he signs Zorb Nation. Um, we're going to go with the A-team. Okay, so, um, you know, I wasn't originally going to put this one in, it just popped in my head, because for some reason, the A-team has become a meme that people copy and paste the intro to the song on, like, Facebook posts. Like, they'll be like, hey, and um, this is how many people got the virus, and the comment will be, don't let this distract you from the fact that in 1978, a crack yeah. team of, like, it was literally like, the, it's become a thing. And I don't know where that came from, why it became a thing. Do you know Extreme? I don't know where it started, but I'd say the first 12, 13 times I saw it, every single time I enjoyed it. And then after that, it started to get a little old. <laughs> yeah. Like the, when it's on a, a random bar stool thing, it's like, okay, you've taken it too far. Well, that's, it's a common, it's a common theme among memes to like take, something like that like on this day and blah 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 yeah you're right to, to do that Red uh, dog. The, other, oh, oh, the other one that's commonly seen is the al bundy don't let this distract you on this day in 1968 al bundy scored four touchdowns for polk high yeah. so, um so the a team we're doing mike and um this one does everyone want to stick within the four for this one yeah yeah I don't, there's not really well, it matters the, Outside of Hulk Hogan making a cameo, I can't recall any, you know, maybe other crossovers. Was there like a Knight Rider cross? I mean, there's always crossovers that whatever. So um, for the A-team, I'm going to start with uh, Brian Extreme. I'm going to go with B.A. Baracus. Um, I think, so he was a mechanic. And now Brian's, uh, lately he's become a car guy, talking about his car. Um, I don't think Brian really likes to fly, and I don't recall B.A. Baracus really, not that anyone really loves to fly, it, it, it's terrible, but um, B.A. Baracus does not, he will drive the van. Um, well, I don't know if extreme- You have to drug him all the time to get him to fly to the point where he probably developed a, a, uh, an addiction to whatever they eat. <laughs> One can only hope, yeah. Um, now, I believe uh, B.A. Baracus uh, was, was straight edge at the time. Extreme is, is not that. He does enjoy a beverage from time to time. But I believe that the, the level of strictness he would adhere to certain things, his convictions are like, like much like a snake eyes. I think Mr. T or B.A. Baracus. Um, 
I looked up his name. Did you guys know what the B stands for? I forgot the A. Bad attitude. Yeah, but his his actual name, Bosco. Oh, that's a good name. Oh, he looks like a Bosco. For bad attitude. Bad attitude. It's a PG show. Uh, yeah. Um, so you were also the mechanic of the group, like I said. So what do you guys have for extreme? I have him as face. I have his face as well. Oh. Okay. Why is that? Good looking? He's the best looking. He's the best looking. When has extreme ever been clean shaven and face is always clean shaven? <laughs> it's all in comparison. It's we're dredging on a scale. We're on a curve here. Okay. So that's <laughs> like okay. like he's the high, he's the tallest midget of the group. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> and I guess everyone's got some facial hair, so there's no real like clean. Mm -hmm. So you're the most clean cut of those. That's a good point. Um, let's move on. Extreme. What do you have for yourself? Uh, Murdoch. Oh, why is that? Because you cuckoo. Sure. I don't know. Because he didn't fit on anybody else's. <laughs> he was left over. So. Lieutenant Barkley, if you will. What is that? Is it, is that is it Star Trek? Oh, same character? Same actor, I mean? Yeah. yeah. Same character. He was the one that had a phobia. Well, same phobia. <laughs> he had a phobia of transporters. He, hmm. he would always take the shuttlecraft. He was, it was sort of like B.A. Baracus wouldn't fly. Lieutenant Barkley wouldn't use uh, transporters. He'd always have to take a shuttlecraft. Okay. So that's, that's a reasonable. Beyond you guys. Level, I, I guess. didn't know that. I guess if we, I didn't do, I didn't put Star Trek because I don't know enough to yeah. include that as a, as a trope, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, let's go, since on the Murdoch discussion, I have Biron as Murdoch, only because if, if we were really doing these roles, you would be the chopper pilot. Like you, like I don't think. It's because when we went to Indy, I drove for. Yeah, I, yeah, I just don't see like, I see, I see. <laughs> No one else wanting to learn what it took to fly a chopper. We'd rather spend our knowledge doing other things, other badass things. But I see you saying, you know what? I think it's cool anyway. Sure, I'll fly the thing. Mm -hmm. On that reason alone, Murdoch for me. What do you guys have for, for Biron? I had him as BA because he's direct and opinionated. And he almost, has, almost the haircut a little bit too. Yeah, I had myself as BA as well just because of build. His build? I'm the closest build to Mr. T, I think. Okay. <laughs> Not, and again, no, no. In, and your, and your, no again, it's of yeah, in comparison. If, yeah. if, if, this could be looks, these could be attitudes, whatever you want. I'm, I'm fine with that. Bad attitudes? Yeah. You are the closest <laughs> looking person to Mr. T in this group. And I'm black. I, I don't see color, but I do celebrate it. <laughs> Um, so we got Biron. Uh, let's go to Mike. Did you did you say Biron Extreme? Did you give him? Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Badass. Uh, for Valdrick, I go Hannibal because I feel that if anyone were to say I love it when a plan comes together, I think <laughs> Mike would say that. Like we're all pretty like we, you know, we don't really care. We know we. I think based on Mike's profession and the fact of. You know, whether it's a proof or showing your work, all these things. He wants to see the plan has come together, whereas I don't think any of us really care that much. Um, we may have our own uh, OCD things that we'd like the plan to come together, but I think Mike would actually say it in front of people, like at the end of class. What do you guys I have? Also had, I also had Mike as Hannibal. Yeah. And I don't know, something about Mike with a cigar is yeah. pretty exciting to me too. I think we need to make that happen. Yeah, I think, uh, was there, um, cigar has been part of uh, various sex acts over the years, too. I believe the, the Clinton scandal had a cigar involved, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I could see that happening in Mike's past. This one time, <laughs> in at, a, Dubai, at a pizza shop, in in a pizza hut, someone put a cigar up my ass. It, it wasn't was lit, guys. Place. It wasn't lit. Just saying. <laughs> uh, Biron, what did you have for Mike? I had him as Burdock. Um... Again, I, I just see, as a man of science, he'd be the one most likely to learn how to fly. Okay. He's probably the best at math between us four. Again, it's all on the scale. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I was going to put Mike as Murdoch initially. I thought about it. Um, because it's going to have to learn how to fly that. But I don't think Murdoch, Murdoch has no, ab no, he doesn't have a mean streak. But he's, he's not smart, though, really. I mean, he's not. I don't well, he's insane, so you don't know. I, you can't you can't be dumb and learn how to fly a helicopter. 
true, but like we know Mike is smart, whereas we think you're smart. Right. <laughs> I I present as. I present. But you might not be. We don't know. Are we sure Murdoch was crazy though? I always thought he, it was knacked. But of the four, like I, he's the least threatening. Well, I don't want. I mean, I don't want to pull the curtain too much on extreme. But this is a, what we call a television show, and um, <laughs> you have these guys. I, let's call them actors or thespians. Um, so it may have been an act, but I, I believe he was a little off. Like, and the character think, who once again was on Star Trek was uh, a part of the science team. <laughs> Not the same character. <laughs> It is. He's traveled oh, to the future. Wait, so Murdoch was in Star Trek. That's confirmed. <laughs> yes. Which which Star Trek? The Next Generation. He was also made an appearance in Voyager. Okay. As Murdoch? Yes. Okay. He was the only one crazy enough to think he could transmit a communication through a trans warp portal to get to the Voyager in the Delta Quadrant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Remember, I only have to know 1% more about Star Trek than you guys do to assert anything I want. <laughs> no, you're, that's so true amongst Trekkers, um, is that you just need to know a little bit more than someone else to actually have that knowledge. If I know everything you know and 1% more, you can't refute me. Right. Like, I'll say, hey, I like Cisco as a commander. You're like, he's not even a commander um, or whatever. You know, you'll have some retort. Well, he was initially, but he did get promoted to captain. Okay. It was part of a, you know. Exactly. An initiative from HR, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Is that how Quark got hired too? <laughs> Again, anyway. <laughs> All right, final category, um, Marvel. This is, I don't care what Marvel universe you want to, whether it's uh, comics, movies, anything out there, whatever. Um, I think it'll be a fun category because there's a shit ton of characters. We're probably going to pick ones that are relatively, uh, for the most part, known. Um, because obviously we could just, there's probably thousands. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to go with Valdrick first, go with Mike first. And this is, like I mentioned earlier, the science theme is going to come out a few times. Um, I could think of no other perfect character than Beast for Mike. That's who I picked. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's too obvious for yeah. so many different reasons. Um, I mean, I have, you know. Played by Fraser Crane, of course. <laughs> And also same the guy in, in the new one. In the, right, same character phrase. Yeah. It's the new one, I think, is the guy from uh, Mad Max. Uh, yeah, uh, no. Yeah. Low, right? The, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I have it on it because I think that, um, yes, Dr. Hank McCoy is very smart. Um, very furry, much like Mike. Look at the flannel he's wearing. It's also blue. Uh, <laughs> there is that even know it was going to happen. But much like Mike, can be a little cocky at times can be a little snarky at times. I think that Beast thinks he's a little stronger than he really, he's very powerful, but he's also a little cocky at various times. And he sometimes forgets that he isn't like, you know, God level at times. He's not an Omega level mutant, as they say? He, he's, I, no, he's, he's, I mean, he's better than most. And he, but I mean, I think not, there's times I've read where it's like, like, oh, it's fine. It's like, well, no, not everything is, you know, fine, just because, you know, again, because he's smart and he's, you know, super agile, he's great at everything. But it's his, he's got superhuman agility yeah. and strength, but not like crazy strength, right? But he's not Hulk, but he's, you know, very strong though. Like strong as, like, say, Spider-Man, maybe. I'd say stronger. Yeah? I would. And does he have, like, superhuman, dur I think, I think you have to have superhuman durability to also have superhuman strength, otherwise yeah, that can you tear your muscles up. Yeah. yeah. Well, the reason, I mean, he's a great character for many reasons, but the fact that he's one of the few that combines everything, you know, intellect, strength, and agility. And you don't usually see all those. Is there, is there a subtext where if he, he's, if he's able to suppress his beast nature, he's less powerful or less smart or something like no. that? No. No. There have been storylines where he, what he, what he, because he didn't start off as blue and furry. He was just a, a, basically a guy with kind of gorilla feet. Uh, then he got the blue fur, and then they kind of did some stuff with he got more bestial, but yeah, because he he was in he was the original X Men, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, so he definitely his his style. I think when I think of Beast, because I don't read old comics, I think of like late eighties, which when I got into all this kind of stuff, and that's kind of so. But I, yeah, he's changed he a bit. Him, so and, and Mike has been Dark Beast a few times too, as well. 
Stream, same thing? Same thing. Yeah. It, I mean, it was just too perfect. <laughs> it's too perfect. <laughs> there isn't a more fitting one. All right, so, um, and you, for Mike, you, yourself, Beast? Yeah. Big, oh, wow, okay, look at that. That was the first three. We've had a few twos. That was the first all three. Biron, who did you have for him? Beast. Oh, 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 that was, that was <laughs> Holy shit, okay, yeah, wow. We're done. This is going to be a tough to, to back this one up. Um, I'm going to go with Biron next, and I'm going with Iron Man. And I'll tell you why. I don't think anyone else in the Marvel Universe has more toys and gadgets and all of that. <laughs> Plus, I was also thinking, who's probably the, like, the most Republican of all Marvel figures? And Iron Man has to be up there because, I mean, he wants like no government regulations. He wants to privatize world peace. Right, it's all like free market and all that kind yep. of stuff. Um, Big Ayn Rand fan, probably. Yeah, it's where, yeah, definitely Ayn Rand or whatever yeah. the, the real pronounce. Yeah, and even though Robert Downey's probably none of those things, um, I believe more of the comic. Robert Downey married to my high school year's valedictorian. In real life? Yes. Wow. Sue Levin, now Susan Downey. Wow, look at that. Were you invited? No, no, and she didn't show up at any of our reunions. I would have been said, I won, suck it, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and you would have said... But I know someone who picked me as Iron Man. Yes. <laughs> well, what do you, what's next, 40th? Uh, I'm just fucking with you. Um, so I think, yeah, that, uh, those are my main ones. Yeah, definitely deregulation, free market, all the toys. Um, it had to be Iron Man for me. What do you guys have for beer on? I had him as Magneto because he has uh, evil political agendas that he thinks are good ideas. Mm -hmm. He's not evil. He's misunderstood. Yeah, well, he's, he thinks he's, he's evil from good. your point of view. Yeah, so, exactly. I you like speak Harris, I say freedom fighter. So Magneto <laughs> has the, um, what do they call it, like mutant su su superiority. Like it's, yeah. we're, we're here. We, that's kind of like you with your gaming groups. You, you don't, like, it's not that you just dis dislike others. It's just like, you're here. Like we're, like, we're not, we're better than you. I look like, on you like I look on ants. Right. That's, I think, I think that's <clears> accurate. I'm, yeah, Magneto's a really good pick for him, too. Also, um, throughout history, the evolution of man from, you know, Australopithecus to whatever, one of the common things they would measure is brain size and head, head size, brain capacity. My head is such that we're actually, you know, most humans are considered, they're not homo sapiens, they're homo sapiens sapiens. I would argue my head size pushes me to homo sapiens sapiens sapiens. Extra, extra homo, too, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And also, while Magneto didn't have a big head, he has a helmet, and you don't need a helmet because your head is a helmet. It's hard to find a helmet. Right. <laughs> so like, I think if, like, like, I wouldn't be able to steal that helmet because there's no way it's getting on my head. I need the no, juggernaut no, helmet. Right. No, you're right. <laughs> or just say, make, make my head into a helmet, and we're good. So, Mike, like what juggernaut you has a helmet that's humiliatingly large. That's what <laughs> I would need. <laughs> I put him as Stingray because I know that's his favorite Marvel character. So fan Everyone's like, who the fuck is Stingray? <laughs> <laughs> what movie was he in? Oh, he'll never be in a movie. He'll never be in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, the Stingray background is he's a marine biologist yes. who makes a, a super wetsuit, basically. So it's got some armor on it and it can shoot little electrification bolts out of the tips of his wings. And, and he was, he's got, yeah, he's got like the, 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 the wing things, like from his arms to his like legs. Like a stingray. So he's really fast yeah. at swimming. And well, it's really like horrible to try to move in that. Yeah. What if he normally, like, what is he, what sort of uh, group is he usually? Avengers. Oh, the yeah. Avengers, okay. He's a reserve Avenger, and the only appearance that actually mattered was in Iron Man, Iron Wars 1, where Iron Man first, he started, like, people are using my technology for evil. He developed a device that would disable it. So he did, the first one he attacked was Stilt Man. And Stiltman goes, I'm not fighting Iron Man. He's way above my league. I'm like, you're fucking right he is. <laughs> Iron Man kicked his ass. And he did a couple others. He did like Crimson Dynamo and stuff like that. And then he went after Stingray, who was an Avenger, which he can't go attack Avenger, but it's his technology. So he ends up beating the shit out of Stingray because what's Stingray going to do? And he tried to disable his technology, but no, Stingray invented his own shit. So I take pride in that. And he says... And then he, and Stingray goes, I'm telling on you. And that's when and I remember. it's obscure enough. You don't have to worry about other people. Like, you know, you're doing it wrong. Like no yeah. one's, be, no one's being Stingray fan. Stingray didn't copy off you, Tony. 
Um, let's uh, and for beer on for yourself, obviously, is that pick then? Same yeah. pick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, extreme. Um, I have you as Daredevil, and I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of people think Daredevil isn't that cool, but I think he's actually a cool character. I don't think he's being of the the vigilante side of things, but the nicer version, that's what I would see you doing it. Whereas like, you know, I really like Punisher. That's a little too aggressive for your personality. I think you'd be more of the, hold on, let's not, let's not kill him. That kind of thing. And I also think, oh, go ahead. Daredevil from the Netflix series or more Daredevil from the comics? Well, so, or Ben Affleck, shitty movie. Um, That one's out because that's garbage. Um, I actually like both. Um, I I didn't read a ton of Daredevil. I read like, I know Kevin Smith did some Daredevil. Um, But I actually, I like the show a lot. So if I go to the show, I like the fact that Daredevil is, um, so being a lawyer in, you know, in his other life, um, he's defending the Punisher on trial. That's something that, you know, that skates that line of like, Yes, he's good, but it's sort of he's defending murder, a murderer kind of thing. But so as I, a lawyer, that's good that a murderer deserves representation. Right, because he's a lawyer. But then again, lawyers are also shitty anyway, so there's that. So I think uh, Daredevil, I think, fits that mold. I also, while Extreme isn't blind, he's colorblind. Yeah. And that was the other reason why I said Daredevil. <laughs> oh, my God, my arch enemy has blue and green. I can't tell. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Daredevil. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we ever talked about Daryl before. The so reason I brought up the TV show Netflix versus the comic is he kind of isn't that much of a badass I found on Netflix. He's constantly getting his ass kicked by normal thugs. The first season I liked a lot. Yeah, then, so I liked then, it, yes, but okay. he was not. It was too realistic. Like, he wasn't a badass enough. It's weird because when you look at the Netflix shows, there isn't really, like, a, a line because you have Luke Cage, which is still pretty, um, like, un- like unkillable of sorts right. um and that didn't change but yet daredevil isn't really you know what you what you'd expect in that show but i like think like, the comics he was basically unhittable because he would sonar or whatever would yeah. get yeah. You, almost like spider well, sense not quite as good but. in the second season he got a lot more daredevil e because he was still he wasn't even in costume i don't mm-hmm. think at all in the first season oh, if okay. i remember correctly he was just kind of like wearing a, a black mask or something uh, yeah one of my favorite things, I'm going back to colorblind in a way, I guess, the color, the and Daredevil Yellow, when they released that, and it kind of fit into the in between the original Daredevil run. And it addressed how he changed costumes from the yellow and brown to the red, because that was never addressed in the comic. It was just done because it looked better. But he, in that one, there's like a story where he obviously can't tell what color his costume is. And uh, I think it was a little girl or something brings it up to him. It's like, uh, you're yellow and brown. He's like, oh, it sucks. <laughs> like, I'm I, e color. I'm yellow and brown. Am I in the X Men like from way back? <laughs> <laughs> or Daredevil. Really cool. What'd you guys have for extreme? I had him as Titanium Man because <laughs> Titanium Man is also a filthy communist. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's a there's a handful of uh, of of Soviet ish. Um, yeah, a lot of, there's yeah. Iron Man knockoffs of Titanium Man and Crimson Dynamos. Oh, right. <laughs> First Ursa Major was a cool one, I think. Which one? Ursa Major. He was just a big bear. Yeah, there's a so yeah, I think extreme. I mean, the communist side. He, no, he went there, as they say. <laughs> Mike, what did you have for him? That was the Punisher, for the reason that I don't ever want to piss you off <laughs> yeah like if so I, she, I can see him of the four of us if someone killed our families <laughs> it, it would affect you the most they, yeah. well and also if they were interviewing me if brian killed five thousand people in a high clock tower and they'd say oh, you knew brian well did you ever see something like this coming I'm like kind of <laughs> He was yeah. a little. He was a little off in the war. <laughs> it's always yeah. the quiet ones. I, I can see that one fitting too. And the vigilante thing, I think, fits extreme as well. I think it fits that style of it, so it's good. Extreme. What did you have yourself as? I didn't do myself for this one. Okay. I didn't do myself for any of them, and I made them up on the fly. You should be. I, I didn't. I, I didn't do myself. I don't get it because Mike brought it. I didn't do you guys as any of these. So yeah. Okay. 
Last we have me, and then we're going to wrap up this episode. I'm going to do fan service and put you as Deadpool before he was cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> I do have the post Lee Field Deadpool, though, because the post Lee Field Deadpool sucks. But so, oh, JP's got feet. I do have feet. I know. How to, and by the way, my socks say RL, and I actually have them on the right feet, which is weird, or the left feet. Um, yeah, so I have New Mutants 98 for my Deadpool cred. But um, yeah, I still, I mean, the whole uh, Deathstroke thing and that kind of like, you know, inspiration, stolen, whatever you want to oh, call God. it, Slade Wilson, Wade Wilson, close enough. Um, but I think that for me, like, I love Deadpool when he got his first series. And Joe Kelly was writing it, and it was like the yeah. first 30 issues, 20 or 30. And it was just it's so good because it was the first comic I ever read to break the fourth wall. And that immediately was like, oh, this is great. Like, it was like watching, you know, like Monty Python or some kind of like comedy thing, but I've never saw that in comics. Like, you either had superhero comics or like funny, like fucking Archie comics. You never had like the two together before I saw Deadpool. So that's why I, from the beginning got it. You should check out the uh, Burn Run of uh, Seahawks. He does that a lot too. But with which one? Seahawk. Okay. Seahawk was the first one to kind of do it, but I can't stand Burns art. So I, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, it was really, like, I have. There's been so many ever since the movies. There's been crazy amount of Deadpool things, but oh yeah, yeah. The last one I really got into was when they hooked up Deadpool and Cable because I didn't think it, it would be a funny or cool pairing, but it actually turned out to be pretty good. Um, I didn't think it would be good with those two. I know they're the similar, they were both created at the same time, but they really had nothing to do with each other. So. Other than they fought their mercenaries. Yeah, yeah. And then they did. It's kind of funny when that whole like legal thing happened, um, they were both re redone as like, so Deadpool is Agent X and Cable became Soldier X when they couldn't use their names anymore in like the early two, mid 2000s or so. And then they went back and was like, oh, everything's fine. Whatever, whatever happened, happened. But they redid both those titles as Soldier X and Agent X. It was kind of weird. So anyway, uh, Biron, what do you have for me? I view as Puck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why? The only reason is I want to see how you'd react. <laughs> Well, I react better to Mike saying Deadpool. <laughs> but you're picking things to piss people off, and that's not part of the game. I said beer ad. That's beer ad to a team, though. Then you should have made everybody rose. You know what I mean? <laughs> everyone everyone Fine, your, your ice man, the gay one. <laughs> you know what? I'll accept that. What's wrong with Puck? Uh, no, it's fine. It's, He's it, like Beast. It, He's agile. Um, I just expect it to be more of like a, a cooler kind of character. And your love of Canadians? And really? Okay. I did deliver soap to one by hand. Yes, All right, we're moving to extreme. Um, a Deadpool is a great choice. I wish I would have chosen that. I chose Spider-Man for similar reasons. The uh, snarky wit and humor of Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like Spider-Man? Is that true? Is there people here that don't like Spider-Man? He's very redhead, so yeah. Is, yeah, he, there you go. <laughs> is Peter Parker Spider-Man now bisexual, I think I read? You read no, no. <laughs> Wishful thinking on my I've part. Never, I've never seen that at all. But here's the no, thing: man. there's so many different like lines that we don't. That I don't know how many have, have dabbled. Because they reboot the damn series so often. Remember when it was like four, five hundred eighty-seven? What was something that when I was like you know really into like X Men stuff, I just couldn't keep up because there was too, way too many titles, and it just yeah, was like. Right. And then there were the, the the amount of crossovers and everything, and it was like it, it's just way too much. Um, to try to keep track. So. Who is the other one I was thinking of that's that's kind of would annoy people to be labeled as would be long shot. Yeah. His his bones are hollow like a bird's. How is that not anything but gay? <laughs> it's not gay, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So we had fun doing this. Lurpcast TV assigning us different roles. Um, feel free to comment below if you know us or don't know us, but just from the videos, that's fine too. Want to throw some out there. We're happy to have more insults or compliments. Um, we didn't cover DC. Why didn't we cover DC? Well, much like the, the, the movie line, it's going to get second billing in this show too. You're going to get DC in the Zlurp Nation content. So sign up below, get all up in that. Make sure to subscribe, like, Zlurp on that sub button, follow everywhere at Zlurpcast, and we'll talk to you next time. Blur!
Brought to you by Nuffles. Bet you can't just roll a one.